Speaker, thank you for recognizing me um, to speak on this very important uh, motion. Speaker, um, I've got uh, lengthy comments to, to make and I will be using my time, but I, I do want to say at the out outset that I really hope that all members of this House recognize that this motion is not a laughing matter, that this motion is not, uh, and the issue that this motion addresses, that is the issue of climate change, is not an electoral matter. It is a matter of our future. It is a matter of the future of the pages that help us in this uh, legislature. It is a grave importance to my son Rafi and my daughter Eliana and many, many children across this, this province. We may merit the debate, Speaker, as to how we deal with climate change. But Speaker, to have a conversation around saying somehow climate change is not an issue or somehow it's an election issue, I think a Speaker is very short-sighted in 2018. I just wanted to say that, Speaker, uh, as a starting point because I personally passionately believe that one of our gravest challenges dealing moving forward as we build our country for the next 50 years so that when we are, when we are looking back and saying what, is, what Canada looks like at the 200th anniversary of its confederation, in combination with Speaker, the work that we have to do in reconciliation with our indigenous peoples, climate change is the, is the second most important issue we have to deal with. And an obligation and responsibility of representatives today towards our future generations, our generations that are growing up now um, uh, in, in terms of the society and, uh, and, and, and the province and the country that we leave behind. Speaker, I, I want to start by reading this motion um, for the record. Because I think it's a simple motion. It's a simple motion because it speaks uh, of some very important facts that are worth addressing. The motion, Speaker, simply says that in the opinion of the House, we recognize that climate change is a real and present threat that is already costing Ontario families, and that Ontario should do its part in supporting national and international efforts to reduce greenhouse gas pollution at the lowest possible cost to families and businesses by putting a price on pollution to combat climate change. That is the totality of this motion. And I can say this fair bit of conviction, Speaker, at least in my community of Ottawa Center that I have the great privilege of representing in this House, that if I read this motion to anyone in my constituency, and as have I had many, many conversations with people in my writing, you will get hardly any disagreement with this motion. And in fact, the conversation comes to is, what real action are we taking to combat the effect and impact of climate change? So as I look at this motion, I kind of parse it down in, 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 in four parts that this motion is really addressing. One, that climate change is real and present threat. Two, that it is costing Ontario families. There is a cost associated with that threat. Three, that we have to do our part in supporting national and international efforts, the work that is done, being done nationally across the country and the work that is being done internationally uh, with, with agreements like the, the Paris Treaty in order to reduce greenhouse gas pollution. And four, that the best way to deal with this and the consensus that exists right now around the globe is by putting a price on pollution to combat climate change. That there is no better way of dealing with climate change is to look at the key ingredient, which is emission of carbon or greenhouse gases. And the best way to curtail that is by putting a price on that. 
Now again, Speaker, I will, in order to be fair, I will say this, that we can, we can debate as to what form the price should be, what the price should be, should be whether it be cap and trade or a carbon tax, uh, what the quantum of that price would be. The, I think that, that is a legitimate policy debate to have. And different political parties or different people of different persuasion could have a different point of view on that. And that actually speaks to our role as legislators to have that debate. Where I get into trouble, Speaker, is when I hear people saying that climate change is not a problem, that it is not a real threat, that it's not man-made, that we don't have to do anything to deal with climate change. Or climate change is a problem, but we don't have to do anything to deal with climate change. And those sentiments, Speaker, are not hypothetical. When you start hearing leadership of certain political parties like the conservatives right now say that, that is of concern. Because that is not really then stepping up to the, the real issues that we are facing. And be honest in our conversation with the people as to what solutions may be necessary to deal with the problem. To my mind, Speaker, that is not leadership. To say that, yeah, climate change has got to be dealt with this, but you know, we'll figure some way out, but no, nope, we're not going to put a price on pollution, be it carbon tax or cap and trade. That we're not going to, uh, we're not going to address that in a, in a, in, by policy instruments that are most effective, and then there is a consensus around the world to deal with this. I think that is not, that is not right. That is not leadership, and that is really not really addressing the issue in a meaning, meaningful way. Now, I know people are getting squirmy about that, and I know that's why bells are being rung, because they don't want to talk about that, and that's unfortunate, because I think it's an important, important debate to have. Um, but that's where, Speaker, I'm, I'm coming from, that, that we, we f we're at a time in terms of our understanding of this issue that the argument that climate change is not real, the argument that climate change is not a problem, is not a real debate. And I know that many members of the Conservative Caucus, most of them are good friends of mine, don't, don't agree with that. I know inside they don't agree with that. And unfortunately, they're being led to a path that they're being forced to agree with that, and hence the little bit of delay tactics that we're, we're seeing, seeing in the House. So let's engage in that conversation. Let's engage in a, in a meaningful, uh, uh, honest conversation with Ontarians uh, around uh, uh, climate change. Speaker, let me speak to the actions that we are taking as the Ontario government. Because I think they're, they're important action and they are, they are meaningful things that we are doing to deal with climate change. Again, on merit, on policy, you may not like the direction and respect that. But then you exchange, we expect something with more conviction uh, from, the, from the other side. In our case, in, in Ontario speaker, I think all the research has shown and there's ample research that's been done to demonstrate that the largest source of greenhouse pollution that existed in our province up to now was in our energy sector. That was the, the largest source of carbon emission. Why? Because, Speaker, as you know, until 2014, we were burning coal to produce electricity, the most dirtiest way of producing electricity. We're just throwing in so much uh, uh, greenhouse gases in our, in our atmosphere which had a significant impact on the health of our environment and most importantly, Speaker, on our own personal health. We all remember the smog days in our large urban cities like Toronto and Ottawa and other communities surrounding as well. We remember the health impact, the difficulty in breathing, the impact on our children who suffer from asthma, and, and, and their uh, lung health and, and other aspects. That's 
not a distant memory. I hope for these children, our pages, it will be distant memory soon. But that was a reality in the, in the province, and it took a lot of courage for a government, in this case a liberal government, to step forward and say, we're going to shut down coal. And it took time, because you can't just do this automatically overnight. You have to, you have to create new power generation. And to get away from a very cheap way of producing electricity, coal was and is the cheapest way of producing electricity in terms of electricity generation, has huge cost when it comes to the environment and our, and our health. But we took that step. And 2014 was the last time, um, uh, was I think the year that, uh, that we shut down any coal generation. And the effect of that is absolutely real. The effect of that is that we no longer have any smog days. That we're starting to see that asthma rates in our children are starting to drop. I mean, there's real consequence, real positive impact that is taking place as a result of that one single very bold decision. And I'm happy to note, Speaker, and credit to all the members that the conventional wisdom of this place now is that that was the right move to do, which is, which is, which is good. I mean, there were, there were some questioning about this, but I'm glad. I remember when I ran in my first election, uh, Speaker, that, uh, in 2007, the then leader of the Conservative Party um, uh, talked about putting scrubbers on, on coal chimneys. And I thought that was ridiculous. You don't put scrubbers on emission and somehow clean smoke will come out. Um, if that, and, 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 and the conservatives ran on that, right? But you know what? Credit to them now, they've, they've moved from. They, they, they actually, like Stephen Harper when he was prime minister, tried to take credit for getting rid of coal generation in, in, in Canada. That was a, the richest moment in my life that I've seen from, from any political leader. But nonetheless, it was, it was reaffirmation to me that they are starting to realize that, that was the right thing to do if they're trying to take credit for it. But that is done. So the question then you ask, Speaker, is what are the other two sources, or are the other sources of, of emissions? And again, analysis shows that the two next big areas that we need to deal with, with the large source of emissions around greenhouse gases, is around our transportation sector and our built environment. Our buildings with aging infrastructure, they emit and waste a lot of energy, and our homes as well. And the work that Ontario is doing in terms of putting a price on pollution through a cap and trade system, and again, we can merit the debate whether cap and trade is better than carbon tax, and that's a fair debate. We think cap and trade is the most cost efficient way and more effective way of dealing with greenhouse gases. But what we're dealing with through our climate change action plan is not only we have put a price on pollution through cap and trade, but using those monies to make investments through our businesses, through our families, through our public institutions to reduce emissions in our build environment, like our hospitals and our schools and university and colleges. Most of them were built some time ago and in aging and infrastructure and need that, uh, you know, uh, steps around insulation and changing windows and better boilers, et cetera. Um, and also in building a robust uh, public transit infrastructure. And the investments we are making in terms of the LRT in, in Ottawa that uh, very soon will be opening runs through my, through my writing and then going to phase, phase two um, to other parts uh, of our city or the expansion of the GO network or the building of the uh, electric uh, 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 speed rail uh, through southwest on, uh, Ontario. Um, all these are very important investments to build public transit to ensure that people have alternatives to just driving uh, their cars. Speaker, the, the reason um, cap and trade, if I may speak to that for a moment, is a better system. And again, notice in this motion, we don't talk about cap and trade as a preferred model. We, we're, we're saying there should be price and pollution that has the lowest possible cost. But we've got to agree on that putting a price on pollution is the most effective way of dealing with this real and present threat of climate change is the reason we, Speaker, prefer cap and trade is of its effectiveness. One, it costs less 
to Ontario families and business, then adjust a flat carbon tax. And again, there's ample studies being done. Ecofiscal Commission is something, somebody that as a body that I follow regularly, and they've done a lot of good independent analysis around these areas. And two, that by mechanism, by design, cap and trade uh, is a system that over time puts, puts a cap on how much emissions you can, you can put out on the environment. And that cap comes down. And that is an effective way because it, it, it incentivizes innovation. It incentivizes companies, uh, businesses who are involved in uh, mechanisms or processes that have high results of emission to actually go to cleaner technology, to cleaner sources. So there is an, an incredible element of innovation that exists as a result of cap and trade system versus a flat carbon tax, because carbon tax is, is just a tax. It is a motivation to move away from using something that you may pay a higher tax on because it's a disincentive to your personal finances, uh, speaker. But the incentive for anybody, because if taxes become normalized over time, as we know that, so the incentive for somebody to then actually to invest and innovate, to bring uh, 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 manufacturing or processing that is less carbon intensive does not exist in a flat carbon tax model. And that is why, Speaker, we, we prefer the cap and trade model that not only is a lower cost, but it, it has a built-in mechanism to ensure that we move to technologies that are cleaner in nature. Now, here's an interesting thing, Speaker, and I think members of this house will know that the most successful and effective cap and trade system that have existed, that worked, was the one that Brian Mulroney as Prime Minister and Ronald Reagan as pre President agreed on to deal with acid rain. We may remember how big of a challenge acid rain was to Ontario and Quebec on the border communities. And that was happening because of the emission of sulfur, sulfur dioxide in our environment. And those two leaders, in their respective roles, worked together, both were conservatives, and came up with a cap and trade mechanism to deal with acid rain. And guess what, Speaker? It worked. We do not have an acid rain problem anymore. So we actually have an example of, again, me memories for us, these, this, uh, the generation of our pages won't even know about acid rain, which is fantastic, right? And that's, that's where we want to be in terms of climate change as well. That, that we actually dealt with this. I was probably, I think, their age at that time when that issue was being dealt with. And we effectively, through a, through a policy tool that we knew will cost less and to businesses and to consumers, but be more effective, would work. Because in the end of the day, where you want to get at is hopefully you deal with the problem as we deal with this acid rain, and you don't need the mechanism in place. Because if, if we stop, we reduce our dependency on, on products and services that are carbon intensive, you won't, there won't be no price on pollution because th those products will disappear from the marketplace. So, uh, Speaker, I wanted to sort of lay out these facts, and I really wanted to sort of clear a distinction in the debate that de that's taking place, because I think this motion deals with, with, with facts. And I, I think it's important that we support facts. The policy prescription as to how we deal with those facts, we can differ. But to argue, the Speaker, that there is no problem of climate change, to argue that we to argue that, oh yeah, there's a problem to climate change, but we don't do have to do anything about it because the timing is not right, or somehow we can, ignore, we can not deal with the problem because uh, even though consensus exists, the price on pollution is the best way to do it. I think, Speaker, that is not honest. So I really hope all members will support this motion because this, uh, uh, this motion is factual. It's not prescribing one idea like cap and trade over carbon tax. It doesn't do that, but it recognizes, as, as the second largest economy in this country, that we have to play our role in fighting climate change, and I hope all members support this motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further debate.